Yes. Which I will clarify. So. Don't let that scare you because <laughs> those are yeah, important things that the judge and all. that everyone needs to know. It's, they need to be in the court report. If there's an issue, we have to say it. We have to bring it to court. So it yeah. needs to be in our court report mm -hmm. because if you don't put it in your court report and then you say it in court, then the attorneys right. are going to get on to you right. and they're not going to be nice. And they're going to say, why is this now just being brought up? Why wasn't it in your court report? Why wasn't this? Um, and we don't want to just never acknowledge a problem because then it's never going to get fixed. Right. So, yes, I, sometimes we do take a little heat. Poor Lois has had that happen. I had, had heat last, I had heat today, actually. Um, just real quick, I have a case and I did something very nice. I thought of, I got a crib for the father who was trying to get the baby back. I told him on Monday, I'm coming to your house, bringing you a crib. Yada, yada, God bless you, God bless you. So I don't go alone because I didn't know where I was going. So my Casa Companion, who's my sister, ride or die, she wouldn't die for me. She <laughs> 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 companion. We go there and we have just seen a report from CPS the week prior saying the house was great. He needed a little help with some sticky areas. Oh, Lord. Just this kind of stuff. And we get there, bring the crib. He's, he's excited to get the crib out. And he left the door open, so I'm going in. So I go in the house and I didn't get past the door. Uh -huh. Stink. No, you couldn't get past the door. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. It was just, just, it was just, yeah. oh my gosh, we are not putting that baby in here. Why oh, did not even bring you a crib? And that was my thought. I immediately called her from the driveway. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, what did Katie mean? But she said it was this, this, this. That's why I willingly went out of my way and went and got this crib and all this stuff. And now I'm just, you know, slapping my face. Yeah. I would have never even encouraged him to think we're fixing to help you get this baby back if you're doing everything. Anyway. So I went home and I tactfully typed, well, I talked to Katie. Did you let him have the, the crib though? He already had the crib, I wasn't taking it back. Oh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't taking it back. So I, I, I talked to CPS and she said, oh no, it was not like that. She sent me pictures and it was a very nice house. I mean, it had floor. Mm -hmm. The picture she sent me, she saw a week before. So I was upset and I told Rachel, I'm more upset that he didn't make an effort. All right. You know, at least if you're not gonna keep a clean house, you're gonna fix it up before someone from court comes there. Right. Can, at least give the illusion. So that was more what I was upset about. Anyway, so I typed an email today to Charles that was here and all the attorneys involved stating what I saw, that it was in disarray, it was total clutter, there was no effort made, and I don't think it's baby standard safe. It's not, you're not going to put a baby in there, especially someone toddling or crawling. And, you know, he's only five months old, but and so then today I get a text from Dad saying, I just read your email that you sent to everybody. Oh, I take gosh. two steps forward, you push me one step back. I mean, it was just a long text from him, and he's very disappointed in me, and I didn't invite you in my house. And What what was your response? I told him that was my responsibility to report what I saw, and it was not a safe environment for an infant. Good job. Love it. But now Sometimes my relationship with him is going to be very yes. strange. Yes, it is. When I go to his house, I felt like, and I told her, I feel like this attorney slapped me. I mean, you're not prepared for her. Right. You're not prepared to be drug under the bus whenever you're trying to help somebody out. I was not having this attorney on anything anymore. Well, I, you have to. No, you don't. It's his attorney. Well, but like your attorney, you got a copy. Like the, like the, they uh, still have the child's eat. attorney. They don't have to copy his attorney. They still have. But I still like if I'm doing an email to one attorney, if it's right. Some, right. I would do it to right. all, all, all the them. attorneys involved because right. they all need to be aware of. So like I was just talking to let his lawyer make the case. I was just talking to to Mr. Van Oren and telling him, you know, I just sent you an email. He said I read it and you did the right thing. That you, it was your responsibility to say the facts. It. And I said, but now my relationship with him, he said, I don't care about your relationship with dad. Oh. It's your relationship with the baby that matters. So yeah, you're here right. to fight for that baby. So he made me feel better. Yeah. It made me feel better that he actually read it. I just sent it, what, 2 o'clock this afternoon? And he actually had read it in the okay. car. Yeah. But, like, we so, don't want to be contacting the parent's attorney. Well, it makes me think, I need to get an unlisted number. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, is his dad going to come jump sure on me? Dad jump up on him. <laughs> <laughs> I have an unlisted number. For you Kaiser. can do that. Both, yeah. Through Google, yeah. Yeah, multiple people do that. I do. Um, I, I do that in training. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, with Rachel and I, or Rachel was talking to the table about that situation, um, and we all had the same thoughts as Rachel, and um, we 
appreciate you for having those hard conversations with people, um, but ultimately you were doing you were giving him a crib. Um, right, but what I was telling the door. What I was telling <laughs> Charles was, should I have at that moment said, "Can you step outside? I want to talk to you." Maybe, and then he would have known. Oh, this is coming. She's fixing. To, she's fixing to wrap me out. Should I have been bold enough to say, my sister would have died, Lord help her, she's not going to do <laughs> Should I have been bold enough to say, can I talk to you outside away from his two children? This is not acceptable. I don't think what you did was, or just I go think not having that conversation, go I don't think that. that was wrong. Because I feel like you would have been confrontational had I said, and he probably would have. And sometimes you don't think about those things until after you leave the yeah. situation. There's I mean, so many times. It's always 2020. Yeah. Like, ideally, in a perfect world, yeah, that might have been a good idea. But I don't think you did anything wrong, like, by... Yeah, but I know I, know yeah, I hurt him. I mean, I hurt him. I think maybe that's just a conversation you can have with him next time you see him. Just, um, you know, maybe I should have handled that differently. Yeah. Um, but I feel like now we have maybe an open line of communication, and uh, you know my concerns with the way the house was. And maybe you could just say, next time I have those concerns, I'll come straight. He invited me to come back. He said he's cleaned it up. He wants me to come back and look at it. And I thought, well, I'm good. Well, also, <laughs> I'll go with you. Jeremy, what are you doing next week? I'm <laughs> 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 a big guy to go with me. I do think that your relationship with him is mendable. Yes. That does happen. There are rough points in parent advocate relationships, there's tension. Their parents feel like everyone's against them at times, yeah. that they can't do anything right. And so, you have, we do have to take the time to explain to them, like, I am on your side, my goal is having unification, but if there is an issue, I have to acknowledge yeah. it, and I do think, you know, by saying this now, you know, you need to clean it up, and I appreciate you cleaning it up, and if it was just that one time thing, that's okay, but I do have to acknowledge that. And and that's why I'm like you said earlier, how should I have done this, could I have done this? I think even as like a CPS caseworker, you have to assess the situation when you're there Every and time. you feel safe. If you already have that relationship with him, maybe from you know the case that's gone on longer, maybe you could have done it. But there's no wrong or right. It just yeah. comes from you assessing the situation. How comfortable do you feel having that conversation, or do you think you need to pull in back up and yeah. do the email like you did? And, and and so, or, I don't know if it was Lois or Murphy jokingly said, you know, Jared, what are you doing next week? Mm -hmm. Anytime you feel uncomfortable, if you do want a man to go with you, we no, she had can't call Jared. He's a good I'm man. not saying <laughs> Jared. I'm no, we saying have several. we do have. Yeah, well, Rachel had said, do you want Chris to go with you? And I was like, oh, I'll just take Nancy because I can probably run faster than her. <laughs> get out of there and leave her behind. We'll be fine. <laughs> And yeah. she was like, oh, I don't know if I can go back in there. Like, our role as CASA is not to be a life coach to the parents. Correct. You know? We want, so it's just like, I'm just going to go in there. I'm going to look at stuff. I'm not going to tell them one way or another. I'm not going to life coach them. They have classes for that, you know? Yeah, but I think also as a CASA, it's not, not, not life coach, but we're the way things are moving now. We're there for the kid first and foremost, but we're also there for the, for families. the family. And that means maybe guiding somebody who, like I have a case right now, the mom, the child was 18 months old, weighed 10 pounds, starved pretty much, um, but the mom, I don't know if it's a cultural thing, I don't know, but she is lacking a lot of education when it comes to the child. There's no drugs involved, nothing like that. It's uh, just lack of education. education. Um, so in that case, I would feel like if I was the CASA, pointing her in the right direction, not giving her, yeah, like the life was like, oh, this is how you do it, but pointing her in that direction saying, hey, here's these classes, because sometimes CPS doesn't do that, and that's why we're there to fill in the gaps for CPS. Yeah, I mean, we're not the parent's advocate, no. yeah. but it's only going to benefit the child if we're helping and being a part of that team that encourages the parent like to do better. And, to do better. and sometimes they may not accept you, but sometimes they're going to blow everybody off and not do their services, but I have seen advocates develop a relationship that was even rocky at the beginning, and then through persistence say, hey, how are you going? Or, oh, I haven't heard from my caseworker in forever. Okay, well, let me check in with your caseworker. And then they talk to the parent, they get their services, where they had cost to not intervene or showed some interest to make sure that the parent, you're not doing the work for the parent, but you are supporting them because that child ultimately wants to be with their parents. I'm and just saying, I'm not going to go in there and say, hey man, 
somebody from court's coming. You need to clean your stuff up. Your hair falls like, like mold. No, we need to clean all right. And unfortunately, you know? um, each person, specifically with cleanliness in the home, some people weren't taught right. what clean is. Right. So he might think, that's I'm not okay. saying that that's an excuse, but he might think that that is clean. And Well, after seeing the pictures that... The before picture. He knows before the difference. Knows the last right, right, week right. pictures versus yeah. this week picture. He knows <laughs> the difference. It just made me feel like it didn't. You didn't think it mattered that I was coming. Right. I would be. A, I would be on my piece and cues with everybody related to the case. Right. I'd be shoving shit in the closet. I'm telling you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not telling you. But I don't know if I'm going to help all this. Just generally speaking, <laughs> so a general question. Okay. Because in other training that I've had, we never contacted the parent's attorney. If it was something that like the child's attorney felt needed to be shared with the parent's attorney, we would take care of that. But it's just kind of like, okay, I'm building representation for the child and advocating what's in the best interest of the child or my report that the caseworker, the caseworker can deal with it, but like. I think that was my question was, why would she share that with him? Like that Rachel would, said, because it was probably gonna be brought up in court. It's probably gonna be mentioned, you know? But yeah, you don't contact be. the parent's attorney, right? I think there are things where you should contact them about if you have. See, that's always like needed to, like exactly. every two months. We have an example yeah, of where so. something happened. Yeah. So, we have a case right now, uh, there were <laughs> concerns that were never brought up to the father's attorney, like, and we ended up in court and then they were brought up and so the up, yeah. attorney basically said this was never brought up to me, I have no time to come up with a, I don't know, whatever, defense or rebuttal, whatever, um, <laughs> so he asked the judge to move to strike it or something like that and she did it. Yeah. So we couldn't even bring, it was marijuana, like it was some stuff that needed to be brought up. Till this day she hasn't heard it. She hasn't heard it because of how it all started. And the case is still moving and these kids might be going back, two of them might be going back to the dad because mm -hmm. of all that. And because so, of the technicality that... I'm just going to wait well, for you to say, hey man, send this to the kids. No, the, the, and I, I mean, I've seen that happen a couple of times where a judge has said like, this is like, I hear what you're saying, but you don't have the evidence, and the parent's attorney would have pursued evidence, or the other attorneys would have, and so um, there's not, like, we're not going to email the parent's attorneys every, right. everything, no, every right. conversation, no. yeah. um, but at minimum, we need to be having the conversation maybe with the other item about, yeah. like, okay, so this is something we need to loop everyone in, like, okay, is this, are you going to loop them in, do I need to loop them in, like, how are we going to make sure we're on the same page before court because there have been a few instances that our judges have said, why is this just not going out? And we discovered this two weeks ago mm -hmm. and actually lectured one of our one of our classes before about you know, setting a trap for the parent, saying that that was unfair oh. to the parent to have not given them an opportunity in that two weeks to course correct well, uh, we before also, court. We have a fail-safe system. I mean, if you, if you walk into a house and you stay there five seconds, or, or an hour and a half and leave and you're uncomfortable about something. I know I have I have texted Elaine on the way out going, <laughs> can you meet with me tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and so I come in and discuss it with her first and then we, the we kind of assess the situation and was was I maybe overreacting a little bit or or no is that valid and then we proceed from there who needs to be notified and how quickly. And if it's something I can do, then fine and you know, it's well, not good. A lot of times I've met like with try to go on the same day as the CPS caseworker yeah. does, mm -hmm. do what then it's always gonna look and great. then it's you know, then if we not always because <laughs> <laughs> well. me and a CPS case are working in one and when we walked out the door we're never coming back here. We will meet them in town. We are never coming back to this house again. That's thing. And it was like, literally, we could not wait. We were like sitting like this on the edge. Yeah, and yeah. Just could not wait to get out that door. See, and then also it depends on, it depends on the judge too, because the judge before this one that we had, another one of my gossips, um, um, he had sent an email to me, to the ad litem, 
but he had left somebody off. I want to say it was one of the parents' attorneys, and Delaney actually, you remember it was Matt, Delaney actually got on to him and was like, everybody needs to be yeah, able to so what, you're going to start leaving people out? So it depends on the judge, too. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And the attorney did back him up and say, no, I think it was an accident. Yes. He normally includes me on everything. Yeah, because he does, yeah. But so. over, overall, you know, there might be things you can't share. Like if a child says, my dad hits me with a whip, you may not want to tell that to the parent's attorney. You might talk to the child's advisor and say, hey, you know, there might be some backlash for telling dad, you know, the kid ratted him out. Yeah. But like oh, yeah. the situation where he needs to clean his house, everyone needs to know, like his attorney needs to know so that she can tell him get it together, you need to fix this problem. Because if we go there and say- Just for me, I'm not gonna have the discernment for that. And so I'm just, for me, I'm just gonna let my supervisor tell me the who to loop who been. That's and that's okay. okay. Yeah, that's fine. Because right. I'm not gonna know. Yeah, because I'm not What you learned in training is ask your supervisor, yeah. and it depends. Yeah. <laughs> no, I totally so That way, yeah. I never get blamed for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> You know, nothing to do with nobody. <laughs> that's tough, though. That's tough. It, it's, it's tough, tough. whenever I got a text from him. I was like, that's rough. Oh, I bet you were like, oh my God. <laughs> okay, we're rounding the end here. And you can tell by his text. Okay. He feels like he this is going to go along. Okay. Our, our, not go along. I want to call it our 1221 <laughs> recommendation. I don't want to call it a rule. Um, but we. We recommend that um, 12 days before the court hearing, um, now again, this would differ uh, between supervisors, so it would be 12 business days for Rosa. Um, oh, Lord. But 12 days before the court hearing, we recommend that you start to prepare your court report. Um, so that would give you 48 hours. <laughs> oh my God. You didn't get this. Uh, that would give you 48 hours to. Um, brainstorm your concerns um, and then um, 24 hours to get it to us and um, that way we can start to read it and um, give you some feedback and start the editing process um, the 21 number is going to be um, visit your child 21 days before the court hearing yeah. um, so that gives you um, a visit before you start to prepare the court report um, that gives you a visit before your court hearing. Um, so, like I said, not a rule, just a recommendation. 1221. Okay. Now, our number one mistake is underutilizing the recommendations. So, um, what we have listed here, um, the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services should maintain temporary managing conservatorship, and Christina should remain in her current placement. Those are usually standard. very standard. Um, and so sometimes we have advocates that don't feel comfortable asking or putting more concern or excuse me, putting more recommendations. Um, but we want you to put in the recommendation section anything that you want to recommend. So if your child is having um, what you think to be um, speech difficulties and you want to recommend speech therapy, um, put that in these recommendations. You can you can have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Whole alphabet. Yeah, whole alphabet. We just want to make sure that, um, you know, this is for the child. We want to recommend to the judge um, as much as we can to help these children. Um, if, say you have a sibling group and they haven't seen each other in two and a half months, we want to put in recommendations that there should be a sibling visit, visitation plan written up, um, or you want to recommend that we come back in two weeks to make sure that the, the plan is being um, utilized. Um, so it could be um, that you want to remove the child from their placement. That could be a recommendation. Um, anything to benefit the child um, and specifically about your concerns. Um, so let's just say, for example, we talked earlier about how we might have had a concern that the mother was um, intoxicated or 
under the influence during a visit. In recommendations, we can ask that um, before the next court hearing, we have the results for um, a new drug test for the mother. Um, I'm trying to think of some. Um, so like I've had kids or advocates say, I think that she needs to have an art meeting because she's struggling in school. There might be dyslexia, we need to test for that. Um, um, people do occupational speech therapy um, or she's having extreme behavior issues I don't think her regular counseling is working is there some specialized counseling we can offer um, literally pretty much almost anything if you think like I think the parents would benefit from parenting classes that's not currently on their list or if you have a recommendation and you're not sure if it should go there you can talk to your um, supervisor or you can put it in there and your supervisor when they're reviewing it will say yes that's a good recommendation or I'm going to tweak it to say it a little bit differently or no that's not something we need to put in there. Um, with older teens specifically girls we've had issues with you know teen girls are sexually active sometimes some more than others yes. so we could put in recommendations um, we recommend a trip to the doctor to talk about um, her sexual health to um, talk about birth control um, I know in Beata's case we've um, put in there to, um, correct me if I'm wrong Beata, but um, educate her more on sexual health um, and to just let her know, you know, what happens if you were to accidentally get pregnant right now or what are the options for you not to get pregnant. Um, like those are all things that you can talk to the caseworker about. I think what we need from the judge is please issue a court order to the school that they must conduct an ARD, no excuse for COVID. Yes. <laughs> that would be a great recommendation. Is that we can do that? Okay. Yes. I don't know that the judge can actually court order the school, but yeah. you can ask the judge to do it. Yeah, you yeah. can ask the judge to do anything. Please issue a court order. Because honestly, I mean, that's what we need from the judge, right? Because we're having conversations with the caseworker. Right, kind of say. And hey, sometimes there are some yeah. things that we want to recommend that the caseworker would never recommend mm -hmm. to the court because they have to abide by their policies right. and um, all this red tape. Yeah. Um, where we can recommend, that's why we want to to um, utilize this recommendation section um, as much as we can. Um, if you feel like the caseworker is not following up or the caregiver's not following up to get an art done, you can bring that out the court and say, like, we've talked about it a few times, but I don't feel like that ball is really moving. I just think that that needs to be brought to the attention and we need to make a conscious effort as a group. And I've seen the, uh, Judge James wrote uh, at light a minute and said, okay, Patricia Hardy, you're gonna go figure this out. Why is this kid's class is not transferring? Uh -huh. This is ridiculous. And she will, she's like, let's meet next month and find out and solve this problem. So like, as long as you're putting it in the, in the court reports and people are getting it that way and also saying it in your court testimony, it's okay. Like, use your tools as your court report, use your voice, even if it's uncomfortable sometimes. Yes. We are almost to the end. Finally, the secret to a great <laughs> 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 contact logs when writing your court report. There is a section that asks for um, who you've contacted. Now you can utilize Optima for this. There, um, there are, um, excuse me, I'm jumping the gun a little bit. But by your contact logs, um, right across from add, there's going to be a view notes section. Um, once you hit that button, it will generate all your contact logs to look like this. Um, Sweet. And you can just read through from, and it goes in. Uh, Last to first. Yeah, uh, I think it goes from newest to oldest. Yeah. So um, yeah. you can read the last month to see, to remember, to jog your memory, um, to see what all you've done, who you've talked to, um, and sometimes we might forget our little concerns. It's the most helpful thing in there. Yes, and. Um, and if you, some people like to print them out, to have them on hand. 
but print them by page, because I made that mistake the first time. I just went print. I was like, <laughs> oh, no, I just wanted a mark. If you, um, now beside the view notes button, there is a search button. This search button will take you to um, a more detailed um, search. And um, if you're looking for, if you, Chris, for example, he enters several, 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 several contact logs a day, almost, I'm pretty sure. And so he might get confused of if he's looking for a specific contact log, if he didn't write in, in or a very specific subject, he's, he just can't find this contact log, he can hit um, search and he can find um, the date. Um, or a rough estimate, you can give a start date and end date, um, and you can um, you can even put what party you're looking for, um, and then you can also, excuse me, um, if you know what subject it is, like a child visit, you can put that um, in the little subjects line, oh. or no, I'm sorry, in the activity type, um, and it will bring up all the child visits between the dates that you chose. Um, so if you're visiting your child every day, if they live really close, um, and you're looking for a specific child visit, you can utilize um, the search button. And so it will bring up thing, um, a page that looks like this, um, just a list of all of those. Um, what's the subject type? Or so this was just searched um, between a time period, and so if you're looking for from the end date was today, start date was March 1st, um, you can find all your contacts from, the, from that time. Okay, and lastly, does anyone have any questions? Yes. Yes. <laughs> can you make the subject line bigger? <laughs> I wish I could, I really do. <laughs> I really do wish I could. The subject line helps me find things um, really quickly. I always try to jot in there um, just roughly what I'm talking about with the contact log, and that helps me find things later on down the road. But again, I just want to encourage you guys, if, if you're having issues with your court report, um, come in and we can do it together. Or if you're, if you're just not sure what to put in your court report, come in, we can bounce ideas back and forth. Off each other, back and forth, um, and like I said, like Janet said, on Monday is our um, advocate lunch, and so sometimes we utilize that, or our advocates utilize that to ask each other questions, or just to have lunch together. So, but that is all. Oh wait, hold on. Okay, Joanne, you asked where do we access Optima. So, um, Joanne is a part of our new class, and this goes for y'all too as well. We will get with y'all to schedule a time to go over Optima, um, a time that is convenient for all of you. If, um, if it's as a group or individual, we'll go over Optima with each one of y'all. Thank you for asking, Joanne.
there I'm going to do a case uh, do a case study um, again like I've always done on the case studies I'll do one at lunch 12 to 1 30 and I'll do another one in the evening 6 to 7 30 um, I know several of you have really learned a lot and enjoyed doing the case studies with each other. Can you say um, those so times again? My brain was not April 7th. <laughs> so yeah. that's a lunch time, 12 to 1.30. 1. Okay. And then a dinner time, 6 to 7.30. Thank you. My brain was and not. again, yeah. Zoom or in person. Um, on the 15th, tax day, woohoo. Um, we're doing a watch party, uh, a PBS documentary on the effects of domestic violence on children. And let me see who can answer this question. Say you didn't come to the in-service tonight and you want to keep up with all the in-services that are being offered. What can you do? Zoom. Email. <laughs> <laughs> say that again, Beata, really loudly. Which newsletter? The monthly newsletter. The training newsletter. Which comes every month to your inbox of your CASA email account. If you haven't been finding them, look in your junk or spam. I promise it's there. In the training newsletter, not only do I go over in services that we're having in person, but I put links to other webinars, books, uh, reviews that your other CASAs have given on certain books, documentaries, movies, etc. So the 15th-ish of every month, the training newsletter comes out. Okay. So watch party. When was it again? The watch party is the 15th. 15th. From when to when? From. You'll be in the newsletter. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Six to seven thirty. I think that includes time with discussion. Um, somebody want to stop that? I'll try. Stop it. Just a red light. Um. Okay. So.